um, low back strengthening for prevention and treatment of low back pain. So we just talked about knee pain, but a lot of people have low back pain too. Um, this study, again, the one with the small bracket there, study outcome and clinical relevance. These, this was in the medicine and science and sports and exercise. Um, it was probably performed at the University of Florida. They do a lot of low back research there. Isolated lumbar extension exercise with the pelvis stabilized using specialized equipment elicits the most favorable improvements in low back strength, muscle cross-sectional area and vertebral bone mineral density, which we'll talk about in a moment. Improvements occur independent of diagnosis and are long lasting. That means no matter why their back hurt, the low back machine with the pelvic restraints, the specialized equipment helped them whether they had a herniated disc, whether they had arthritis, whether they had whatever they had, it helped them. And it appeared to result in less reutilization of the healthcare system than more passive treatments. So what is isolated lumbar extension exercise with pelvis stabilized using specialized equipment? What it is is, is where Illy's sitting right here, which is the one that we have you do, where your pelvis is restrained by these two seat belts. You get one across your waist, and you get one across your legs. As everybody knows who works out here. We stick you on this thing all the time. And you're facing that way, and this comes on your back. And then you extend here. Well, by these two seat belts restraining your pelvis, your hip and leg muscles are unable to assist you, to assist your low back muscles in this exercise. It's the only type of system, the only type of setup that fully isolates your low back muscles. And that's what they used in this study. And that's the one that they found was the most, most effective. So we have that here for you. So that's a good thing. And then the top bracket here, um, this is my next topic on the, on the handout there, how to keep your bones like ivory. Um, another probably about nine letter word that's bad as you get older is osteoporosis. That one gets a lot of news. That's, that's a thinning out of your bone tissue. That's when your bones become, uh, on the inside, the, the tissue becomes less dense and your bones become more brittle. So we can all picture in our head an elderly, frail person, you know, we're always fearful that somebody in that group will fall and break their hip. But the fact of the matter is, I've had hundreds of physical therapy patients over the years who told me, I, I asked them, did you fall and break your hip? No, I felt something snap in my hip and then I fell. So the hip breaks and then the patient falls. And that's from osteoporosis. The bones are so thinned out and brittle that they just snap and the person goes down. Well, what can we, can we do anything about that? One thing is diet, obviously. Diet's important. You know, calcium and different minerals that, that you might ingest, um, that's very important. Um, you, you hear um, orthopedists and neurologists and people who people who break their hips go to, or spine patients go to, and they, they, they love using the potato chip thing. They'll tell them, your spine looks like a potato chip. Your leg looks like a potato chip. They love describing it as a potato chip because that's a good visual for the patient. It's just, you know, you can just crumple it up in your hand or something. So we don't want potato chips, we want poker chips. That's what we want around here, <laughs> something you can't even break. So how do we do that? Well, this, this group was from the University of Florida. So they wanted to take a look at that. They did some research on some uh, older folks. They put them on a high intensity resistance exercise training program to see if it would improve the bone mineral density in the femoral neck and their thigh bone. So they had them do that for a while and uh, they tested it at the end and they found that it, it was successful in improving and I'll elaborate on that in a minute. It's actually quite interesting. Um, the data also suggests that resistance exercise increases bone turnover, which over time may lead to further changes in bone mineral density. So bone turnover is new bone tissue replacing old bone tissue. You know, everything in your body is in a constant state of flux. Things are getting replaced and regrowing and all this kind of stuff. So if you can increase the rate of turnover, if you can increase how quickly new bone tissue replaces old bone tissue, That'd probably be a pretty good thing as you're getting older. So they found that this may, may do that too. And interesting, the most 
The exercise is most strongly correlated with site-specific specific and total body bone mineral density, where everybody's favorite, the leg press. The overhead press, which uh, Joe is sitting on. And the lumbar extension, which I just described a second ago. So uh, if you want to increase your bone mineral density, we have some things for you. I found the actual study. And the reason I put it in here was because of the way they did the study. I just found it interesting. They had uh, a control group, which they didn't do anything. They had another exercise group, which was their low intensity group. And I'll describe what that is in a second. And then their third group was their high intensity group. So what they had them do was they put them on the machines they were going to use. And they tested them to find out how much weight they could lift just one time. Just a one all out massive effort. And then they put it down. They couldn't even do a second one. And they took that number. And the low intensity group exercised with 50% of that weight. And the high intensity group exercised with 80% of that weight. Now, we don't do that here. We don't test you on a one repetition maximum, as that's called, because we feel that's dangerous and unnecessary. Because if we guess a little wrong, you, could, you can get injured. And obviously, that's the opposite of what we're trying to do. So we use the SWAG formula to determine your weights. As most of you know, SWAG is scientific wild ass guess. <laughs> and um, by, but by your third workout, you are exercising at approximately 80% of your one rep maximum. That's usually 75 to 85% is usually what people can perform 8 to 12 repetitions with, which is what we have you do here. So um, if they could lift 100 pounds one time, the low intensity group used 50 pounds for 13 repetitions, which I have no idea where they came up with that. And the 80% group uh, did one set of eight repetitions. They did it three times a week. Here we have you do it twice a week for 24 weeks, six months. So it was, a, it was a long study. One set each of 12 exercises was performed. Does that sound familiar to anybody? So what happened? What happened with this group? Both groups increased their strength. So both of those schemes, 50% and 80%, were effective for increasing strength. However, bone mineral density of the femoral neck significantly increased by 1.96% for the HEX group, which is the high intensity exercise group, no other significant changes for body, for bone mineral density were found. So that was the only group upon which there was any change in their bone mineral density. So the other group worked hard for four months or six months, no increase in bone mineral density, although they got stronger. But the high intensity group got stronger and significantly increased their bone mineral density. So the next time you feel like slapping one of us because we're making you work so hard and do all this heavy weight and why do you always put more on every week and all this kind of stuff, we're just trying to help you. <laughs> this is my happy ending to my talk today. The elderly strength training study. This is like my favorite strength training study ever. So, you know, if you're if you're getting a little up there in age, you, you know, and you're doing this kind of exercise, sometimes you may wonder, at least I do, you know, how long, I mean, you can't expect me to do this kind of stuff forever, can you? These heavy weights and all this sweating and all this stuff, I mean, at some point, don't I, don't I, you know, can't I just stop doing this? Well, funny you should ask. Um, these researchers, or this researcher who we, Patty and I just saw recently in Minnesota, it's one of, the, one of the top, if not the top, exercise researcher in the world, found that the same strength training principles and procedures that work so well with seniors can also be applied to frail, older adults. So he grabbed in Orange City, Florida, wherever that is, he went to John Knox Village, some assisted living facility, and he grabbed 19 people, somehow talked them into doing this thing, average age 88.5 years. Almost all the subjects were extremely weak and confined to wheelchairs at the beginning of the study. If you've ever been to an assisted living facility, that's, that's pretty common. You know, there's a lot of people wheeling themselves around. So uh, 
Uh, they took them through there. It did cut them some slack. Now, there is hope for us as we get older. They only had to do six exercises. Whew. Half as much, only six. The nearly 90-year-old. Are you doing six now? I'm doing like five okay, now. I'm yeah, I'm ahead of my time. But anyway, you wouldn't know I was 88.5 no. looking at me, would you? The nearly 90-year-old subjects averaged four more pounds of muscle. They're almost 90 years old. They gained four pounds of muscle. They lost three pounds of fat. They increased their leg strength by 80%. They increased their upper body strength by 40%. They also increased their functional independence down here, the third one from the bottom on that little chart there, FIM score. FIM, FIM stands for functional independence measure. So that they have, you know, dressing, grooming, all this type of stuff. There's this big fancy score that goes along with it. They significantly increase that. Where it says mobility, that's how far they could walk. They significantly increase that. And here's the happy ending. For example, most of the patients spent less time in wheelchairs. One patient no longer used a wheelchair, and one patient left the assisted living program to join her husband in the independent living apartments. That's not, you know, that's nice, right? Six exercises for a few weeks, and you get to go back and be with your spouse. Needless to say, these were very impressive and important improvements resulting from a brief program of strength training. So what are we saying with that? Why did I include that one? Other than the fact that I like the happy ending, I'm just telling you, you, you really have to stick with us till you're at least 88.5 years old. <laughs>